There once was a little girl who lived near the beach. She had a grandfather she loved very much, and she always looked so forward to visiting with him. Her grandfather had a collection of hourglasses, and she delighted, delighted in turning them upside down and watching the sand sift through the glass bulbs. She asked her grandfather why he had all these hourglasses. Because, he explained, the grains of sand reminded him that time was the most precious thing in the world. Christmas was coming. The little girl had not seen her grandpa for weeks. Eventually, her mother was able to help her understand that Grandpa was in the hospital because he was very sick and that he might die. The little girl wasn't sure what death was. Her mother explained that life was like one of Grandpa's hourglasses and that Grandpa had very little time left. One morning, her mother told her daughter that they would be going to visit Grandpa that afternoon. And she asked her to make some kind of special Christmas present for him. The girl excitedly went to work on her gift. When they got to the hospital, the little girl gave her grandfather a beautifully wrapped box. Her grandfather slowly unwrapped the box. He looked inside and he smiled. He understood immediately. His granddaughter had filled the box with sand. Oh, were it that easy that we could si simply extend our days by adding more sand to our hourglasses, more pages to our calendars. But alas, the amount of time we are given is measured. It's measured at a set number of grains of sand, a set number of calendar squares, a set number of turns of the hands of a clock. Too often, we fall into the mindset of those five foolish bridesmaids in today's gospel. We live our lives in the false belief that we will always have time, that we will always have time later, later, later to accomplish what we want our lives to be. And so we busy ourselves with many things that don't truly matter. We distract ourselves with a thousand surface things, foolishly, foolishly thinking that someday we will have enough time, someday we will have enough time for what we say is important. The parable of these foolish virgins calls us, you and me, to see our lives as preciously short and fragile. To realize that now, now is the time to seek the justice and the compassion of God for ourselves and for those whom we love. Instead of terrifying us, instead of intimidating us, the inevitability of the end of our days on this earth should make us realize the preciousness, the unutterable preciousness of the gift of time that we have been given and inspire us to make the most of the limited sand in our hourglasses. 
not just our own, but the hourglasses that are the lives of the people we love. I talked before Mass about the changes coming in the liturgy. You know, I'll get used to those over time. At the end of my life, though, it won't be about those changes. But rather, it'll be about rather, did I spend time praying the Mass when I was here for it? Did I use this time to really connect to the giver of every good gift? And do I spend time on God? Do I work on that relationship in time? This morning, somewhere around 2 o'clock, the clocks changed, marking, perhaps, bringing to our awareness, perhaps, this thing called time. I don't know if you know it or not, but today, in 1947, the CSC was founded. It was founded as a movement club. Back that month, this day, 64 years ago, is that a long time? Or is it so brief still? I saw a Facebook entry just yesterday from a kid named Dan. He posted, I'm almost 20, and I still can't figure out how weeks go by so fast. And don't you know it? One of the biggest differences of your generation from all those who preceded us at this point in your life is that it almost feels like somebody's punching it and the sand is falling through way too fast, way too quickly. Last week I dropped in on my dad. And as I was leaving his apartment, I took a look at him. And something in me knew to look this time at him a little more slowly. He's aging, you know. He's 94 now. And I know that one day when I leave him, I might not see him again. And I thought of all the hours and hours of work I put in, and some of it really important, and still the lack of quality time I spend with him and with my family. And I thought again, I can't count on time with them always being there. It won't be. It won't always be there. All I have, all you have is right now. And that too is passing. The little girl, she gave a gift to her grandpa that was just so precious. She gave him sand for his hour class thinking by doing that she could add time to his life. It's not that easy. Life is very short, my friends. What we do with time and where we give it is one of the best gifts you and I will ever give someone. The gift of our time. Because you see, there's only so much. And I can barely think of anything more precious 